Council for Monday, September 27, 2021. We have one presentation this evening on the Independence Convention and Visitors Bureau <coughs> proposal. Mr. City Manager. Yes, good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the Council. We do have uh, one item tonight, however, that was intentional. Uh, given the level of importance and complexity to the topic at hand, we thought it was important to make sure the presenter had plenty of time to share that with the council and the council had plenty of time to engage in a dialogue. So with us tonight is Steve Maurer. Steve is the um, current board chair for the Independence Economic Development Council. Um, Steve is going to share some uh, ideas with the council uh, and our hope tonight is to get some sense of direction from the council uh, not any final decision making, of course, but maybe some direction about uh, where we proceed from here. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Steve. Thanks, Zach. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, letting me have this opportunity to speak to you tonight. Again, I'm Steve Maurer. I am the current chair of the Independence Economic Development Council. Um, I'm here to present a proposal that would restructure both the Independence Economic Development Council and the Independence Tour and Tourism Division. Uh, our goal is to present to you a proposal that will be more efficient, less costly, and provide better service to our citizens and our city. This may be the first time and last time you will ever hear a proposal where all of the citizens involved agree we need to make a change. All of the citizens involved agree something like this is going to be better for our community all of the citizens involved agree that we can do this with the city support and the change will actually cost the city less money. It may be a first, hopefully not the last, but we're very excited. The independence, the idea is quite simply to have the Independence Convention and Visitors Bureau and form to be formed and then we put tourism and economic development underneath it. How it's currently structured, the tourism is a division of the city, and it has two main functions. One is to staff and maintain the historic sites in our fair community, the treasures of our community, owned by the city. This proposal will not impact that at all. That portion of the, of the tourism dollars and the tourism department that cares for our treasured historic sites will stay the same. Currently, that is part of the Parks Department. They will stay but with the Parks Department. The funding for all of those activities will remain the same. And if we do our job right, there will be more money available to maintain those historic sites. The other part of the Tourism Division is the marketing. The marketing of the city and how the city presents itself to the world to try and attract visitors to our community. We have city staff that operates that portion, that marketing portion, and their job is to promote the tourism in the city to bring it to support our businesses that are involved in tourism, to support the jobs that are driven by tourism, and to create a better atmosphere for our community. Economic development. Economic development is done by a contract with the Economic Development Council. The Economic Development Council is purely separate from the city. We're a 501c6. We have by contract a structure whereby we provide economic development services to the city. We are funded by the city and our other biggest donors are the three school districts, both Independent School District, Port Osage School District, and Blue Springs School District all support the uh, Independence Economic Development Council. We also have over 150 private investors at one level or another that support the economic development activities here in Independence. Tourism, as I mentioned, has the marketing aspects, and those are all basically done by contract. You have a contract with Madden Media. They provide the media buys. They provide the ideas for your marketing. Uh, the most recent that I've heard is radio spots promoting, if you're coming to the Royals game, stay in Independence. The, that is funded by the hotel motel tax as is a portion of the hotel motel tax to use to go for the maintenance of historic sites owned by the city. And again, as I mentioned, that portion of this pr proposal would not impact at all the funding for the maintenance of historic sites. Economic development, 
We have an annual budget of approximately 100, of 280,000. Of that, mm -hmm. 170,000 comes from the city. The three school districts provide another large chunk. And then we have various private businesses and private members that support our activities. Many of those that are involved in the economic development activities, banks that lend money to those new businesses, construction companies that build their buildings, paving companies that construct the new roads, put in the, par the parking lots, electric companies, roofing companies, those that are going to be directly involved with uh, construction of new business activities are the ones that join the Economic Development Council. So why promote tourism? Many think that tourism is simply to try and get heads in beds. In other words, how can I attract somebody to come and stay a night in my city? Because when they're here, they'll go to my shops. When they're here, they will uh, go to my restaurants, and that will support tourism jobs here in Independence. And that is an important thing, but it's not nearly enough. Tourism dollars are truly the welcome mat for our community. If you look around our city, just today, as I was driving here, on 435 and Truman Road is a big flashing sign advertising St. Joe, Missouri. Come visit St. Joe, Missouri. Great place to live and work. St. Joe, Missouri is not advertising in Independence to try and get somebody to spend the night in St. Joe. They're trying to promote their community. They are trying to show that they are a welcoming community, that they are open for people to come and visit, that they're an interesting and vibrant place to live and work. That's what they're trying to do. On the radio coming over, I heard a great ad for Des Moines, Iowa, here in Kansas City. Des Moines, Iowa is not looking for just a road trip from Kansas City. They're looking for people to come experience Des Moines, to experience what it's like to live in Des Moines, and hopefully try to get them to move to Des Moines, to move their business to Des Moines. What tourism dollars truly do is it makes your city the top of the mind. It makes them to be the idea that, you know what, independence, let's go there. Let's try that. Let's see what they have going on in independence. It is the initial marketing for not only visitors, but also companies and employees. When we have a company looking to relocate in independence, it's not just what site do you have for me. It is far more about what is your community like? What can you offer my employees? Why would people want to live in your town if that's where I put my building, if that's where I build my business? They want to know what's your community like? What do you have interesting going on? What kind of vibrant activities do you have? What kind of place are you? Tourism answers all of those things, and that's truly what promoting tourism should do. So why promote economic development? As I mentioned, we have three school districts that help the Independence EDC. They do that because new business helps provide jobs for their graduates. The number one thing that we've heard from our high school graduates on why do they not look at Independence, why don't they see Independence as a long-term place for them, it's because they don't have a job. There's, not, there's no place here for me to work. And that is what we are designed to, to correct. We are out there trying to find the next big business, the ability to bring in those people that will hire, employ, and create high quality jobs for our citizens. We also, by bringing in new business, we help decrease the tax base. And I'll just give you one example. The Indy, Indy Energy did, a, did an article that was published in the Examiner, and it was part of the rate study. And the rate study found that independence power light rates are significantly higher than neighboring communities. And in that study, they even said, so what do you do to fix it? Well, they came up with 33,000 residential customers, 4,000 commercial accounts, or 27 industrial accounts. We both know, we all know, that 27 industrial accounts is a whole lot easier to get than 33,000 new homes. We haven't had 33,000 new homes in Independence in the last 30 years, let alone 27 new industrial customers. Now, will new economic development, new businesses lead to new homes? Absolutely. Look at the growth in population that's happened in Belton, Raytown, Lee Summit. Gardner, Kansas, what an incredible example of growth, population growth, driven by the business community. 
people want to live close to where they work. If there is a job here in Independence for them, they will look the first ring where they can live. The way to fill up the valley with houses is to have businesses in the valley. If you, that's where our growth is going to have to come, but we're not going to get it if we don't have places there for people to work. It's too easy to just live in Belton, where they took over the Flying Eagle Golf Course, Eagle Ridge Golf Course, and made it into a huge new industrial site that is now filling up with businesses. National businesses, Chewy.com is in Belton. Or to just go to Blue Springs, where Amazon is building a new big distribution center. Why come to Independence to live when you can live right there in Blue Springs by where you work? The best way to do that is with industry and distribution. If there's a lesson that we've learned from COVID is that pretty nice new office complexes, high rise buildings that where people just sit behind a desk all day, those days are done. That is not gonna happen anytime, certainly not in my lifetime again, because we've all learned that those office jobs can be done remotely. But if you're building something, you're making something, that needs to be done at a, at a facility. Those kind of jobs will stay. Lake City is not gonna move because they make and manufacture there. But a law firm like mine, we can pick up and go anywhere and we can do it all from home. So the best thing that we can do is find those types of jobs and lure them to independence. So what are the challenges for tourism and economic development with our current structure? I want to begin by letting you know that the proposal that you're hearing tonight is from me. This is my proposal. Now it's been endorsed by the Independence Economic Development Council and it came from a proposed change within the tourism division. When I learned that the tourism division was thinking about pre presenting to you the idea of spinning out from underneath the city and creating its own separate entity, I started thinking, what a great idea, but it's only half a good idea. It would be even better if we married it with economic development because everything that tourism does to promote our community is exactly what the Independence Economic Development Council tries to do and should be doing. But according to their, their PowerPoint, and I'll show it to you in a second, the tourism idea was to separate from the city as a division. It would give them more flexibility. It would give them more ability to grants and funding and even paying memberships, much like we have with the EDC. They were gonna do that by forming a 501c6 and twice this idea was presented to the Tourism Commission and twice they voted in favor and said, yes, we want to endorse the idea of spinning out from underneath the city. And what would happen is they would be a separate 501c6 and they, the advisory commission would still report and, and be involved, only just not as part of the city. This is one of the first slides that we had from there. And I wanted to pull this out because this is exactly the, what they said the tourism staff told their board, their, your advisory commission, about why they should be separate. And, they, and many of these things, you could replace the word tourism and put in economic development, and they would much be the same and true. Um, economic development has been hit hard by the pandemic. And we are at a competitive disadvantage in economic development, as you'll see in a minute, primarily due to funding. Our funding, as you will see, is woefully behind our neighbors, our competitors, and this proposal addresses that. And it is time to explore other operating models. So this was their proposal to create a 501c6, and the city would contract with the Visitors Bureau to serve as its marketing organization. Again, the maintenance and promotion and the maintenance and staffing of the city owned historic sites would not change. Those are all gonna stay within the park department. All that would change and spin out is the marketing sources. And they would use a portion of the transient guest tax as is this proposal. It would also allow them as a separate ent entity to qualify for grants. My understanding is that the time this was proposed, they'd already missed out on over $50,000 in grants simply because they were part of the city and therefore not qualified as a separate entity to seek those grant dollars. And it also allows them for partnerships and memberships. We could structure the tourism much like we do the EDC, where if you're a hotel or you're an event 
in independence and you want to promote it and you want to work with tourism to promote it, you can be a member. And that's additional dollars for tourism to be supported here in independence by those that would benefit the most. This is my last one of these. Why do a standalone Visitors Bureau for Tourism? It, it makes them eligible for additional funding. It allows them to operate like everyone else does in their area. It makes a level playing field so that they can be more competitive and I love this one, improves the visibility and visitor perception, which is the number one thing that tourism dollars should do. We're not just the home of Harry Truman, we are Harry Truman's hometown. And we need to talk about our town and we need to promote our community as part of the tourism goal. So why, what are the challenges to the Economic Development Commission? We have funding and we have memberships, but we don't have near enough in order to effectively compete with our neighbors. Make no mistake, the EDC does things very, very well. We have one of the best at retaining and growing our existing businesses that you could ever want. I would put Jody Krantz in that job up against anybody. She knows every dollar that she can squeeze out of the state. She knows every piece of available real estate in this community. And I think she would lay down in the middle of a car road to make sure that no, no business actually put, packed up a truck and moved out of town <laughs> if we had an available spot. The problem is those aren't necessarily big employers. Those are not any of the 27 industrial users that are going to make a difference on our quality of life, on our IPL rates, on our community benefits. They're not going to bring in hundreds of new jobs. That is what the EDC lacks. We need to focus on large businesses. Look at the valley. You all have devoted millions and millions of dollars to make the valley more developable. You've put in beautiful roadways. We have sewer. We have power. But we have no business. There is nothing there. How come? Because we haven't been able to attract that business. We haven't been able to bring in those new users. We haven't been able to attract the developer that's going to put up the building that will allow the new, bills, the new business to move in. We have been hamstrung for decades by this structure that needs to change. Our other cities that compete with us are structured much like what you're seeing now. They use their transient guest tax to promote not only tourism but also economic development and they use it very effectively, and it's big dollars. I'll show you in a minute, but we're talking millions more than what we have here in Independence. And we know that there's not millions more the way our, we're currently structured. Right now, the 170,000 that you generously give to us to use for economic development comes out of the general fund. And the general fund does not have millions more to transfer over to the EDC. So we need to do and look at what do our other competitors do, what our other neighboring communities do, and maybe we can do that. And we can be far more efficient with the dollars that are available so that you don't have to take 170000 out of the general fund to fund economic development. There are two facilities, and I just bring those up just to let you know. I mean, this was in the last six months. We were on the list. There were two different businesses looking to move, the Eastern Jackson County, in our area, and they loved our school districts. It is amazing when you have three different school superintendents that can sit down with a candidate and say and tell them, we have great schools here, we have, we have a great workforce here, and if we're not educating what you need, you tell us what you need and we'll train them. We will make sure that they are ready to be employed the day they graduate. That is something that I've never seen in any other economic development council. So we have the availability to bring the workers, but what we don't have is the site, and we don't have the infrastructure there organized like a, an effective EDC would do. So why come now? Why am I asking you to consider a change to the structure of tourism and economic development now? Well, the time is lined up because there are vacancies in both organizations. You have vacancies in the leadership on, of the city staff for tourism. And we have a vacancy at the head of the Economic Development Council. 
So before we decided, we were, before we would just hire somebody new to do the same old thing that we'd just been doing and doing, let's try something different. That's what led to this proposal. That's what led to this idea. Let's do something different. And I know when I met with Councilmember Hobart, that's the first thing, the middle thing, and the last thing he told me. Let's not just do the same old thing. Well, this is different. This is way different. And, but it only makes sense because what we've been doing hasn't been working. I included here a citation, uh, just a little quote from the Independence Examiner when they do their 50 year look back. And they look back 50 years ago in 1971 and doggone it, we're not getting any industrial development because we're not ready and we need to do a better job so that we can be ready for industrial development. For 50 years they've been talking about this and we haven't got it fixed. Let's do something different. Let's use the hotel motel tax the way other cities use it. The ballot language certainly is broad enough to allow for use of the dollars to promote tourism, which would certainly include promoting our community, not only to the tourist visitor, but also the business visitor. How would the Convention and Visitors Bureau look? The city would buy contract, much like you do now with economic development, much like you do now with Madden Media for your marketing. You'd do it in one contract. You would contract with the Convention and Visitors Bureau. The Convention and Visitors Bureau would have a director and then essentially two divisions, tourism, the marketing, and economic development. The Innovation Center would stay underneath the economic development and the EDC board would stay in place providing advice and counsel and memberships and support and activity and all of the things that we do for business recruitment, all of those things would stay in place, as would your Tourism Advisory Committee. All of those people would stay in place, providing all the same input and advice for tourism activities underneath the Convention and Visitors Bureau. They simply would be separate from the city. Just to give you an idea how this works, I've pulled out four different cities that fund their economic development and through their transient guest tax by contract, as we have shown. And I will tell you, the community that I patterned most of this proposal off of is Olathe. I find Olathe to be very, very similar to Independence. They're the county seat. They have a diverse population. They're not Leewood or Lee Summit. They have many of the challenges of an older community and parts of it like we do. They have new vibrant parts of community like we do. Yet their transient guest tax brings in $2 million in Olathe. They don't have a presidential library. They don't have an 1859 jail. They don't have anything like we do. And they are matching us on tourism dollars. The number one reason why people go to Olathe is for youth sporting events. They come to Olathe because they want to go, their, ch their ch children are participating in soccer or softball or football or flag football or something like that. The number two reason people come to visit Olathe? Carmen Industries, business. They have business travelers that come and spend the night and they come and see their community and they decide, you know what, this is a nice place. I like this, I like their access to trails. I like their access to the interstate. I like, the, I like their ability to come to downtown Kansas City and get back home. And people move to Olathe and Olathe has experienced far greater vibrant growth than we have here in Independence with many, many of the same challenges. To give you an idea though, they're spending $1.8 million on their economic development and tourism activities and they split it pretty much equally right down the middle. Shawnee spends $450,000 on economic development alone by contract. Overland Park, I mean, even Overland Park where, I mean, they can get a new business just by shaking a tree Everybody wants to be in Overland Park, it seems like. They spend over a half a million dollars on economic development in Overland Park. And in St. Joe, they're, they're funded through the city and the county, and they have over a million dollars that they're spending when we're spending 270. Just to give you an idea, Blue Springs recently did away with their economic development. And they did it because they were spending $350,000, and it wasn't enough. 
What they were getting for that investment wasn't enough. So they made a change. They wanted to do something different and they need to do something different. I don't think what they've chosen to do is gonna be effective, but at least they recognized what we need to do needs to be changed. So this is again, is a slide from the tourism PowerPoint. So how do we make this change? What do we do? They leave the tourism of the historic sites operated and maintained under the Parks and Rec Department. I've already spoken with city staff about that. I've spoken with uh, Parks and Rec Department. They are more than comfortable keeping those responsibilities, maintaining those sites for the proportion of hotel motel tax that we've discussed. Ideally, if we do our job right, that hotel motel tax is gonna go up and it's gonna increase and there will be more dollars for staff to spend on maintaining and improving our historic sites. We know that as it sits now, that's not gonna happen. There's not gonna be this great increase of dollars. Warning ahead, we all heard it on the radio, the Kansas City Royals are looking to move their stadium to downtown. The number one reason why visitors come and spend the night in Independence, to go to the Kansas City Royals. In 2030, when that stadium is downtown, those, all of those activities won't happen here in Independence. We've got to find something different and the, time to, and the time to make a change is right now. So how would we structure it? We would have a board of directors much like you already have with your event center CID. This is not a foreign concept for the city by contract to create an arrangement for activities to be performed that would promote certain events and activities in Independence. You have the event center CID. The event center CID has a president, a vice president, a treasurer, and a couple of board members. That's easily prepared. Personally, I would structure it a little bit different, but I wanna let you know that this example and this model is already exists in Independence and it's already being utilized by our neighboring communities. The idea that we have of the economic development strategy came from a very detailed and exhaustive study. You had 10 different members of the EDC and then another six that spent weeks and weeks and weeks studying different communities. We spoke with Blue Springs, Raytown, Liberty, Columbia, Lee Summit, Springfield, Joplin. The list went on and on. We talked to Olathe and Overland Park and St. Joe. We talked to their chamber, we talked to their city, we talked to their EDC directors. We got all of the information that we could because we started with the premise, our director is gone, how should we restructure or should we keep doing what we're doing? The unanimous decision was, let's try something different. Let's do something different that puts us more in line with what our neighbors are doing, more in line with, is it, with what we should do to better use our available dollars and more in line with what we think our citizens deserve. And I've listed here for you just some of the citizens that were involved and I know particularly that, you know, Jason Snodgrass, the Portal Sage Superintendent was on our subcommittee, intimately involved, and Dale Hurl, Independence Superintendent, was at, very involved in reviewing this proposal. I'm here tonight to ask for direction. Would you consider a contract if we form a CVB, if we get together with the Tourism Advisory Commission and figure out the structure, if we develop the board of directors, if we bring you a contract, much like they use in Olathe, that has measurable performance criteria, things that at the end of the contract term, you can look and say, have they achieved this, this increase in visitors? Have they achieved this increase in business? Have they achieved these benchmarks? Would you consider that? If you would, then our proposal is that we take that, in, we take that thumbs up, we will form the CVB, we will, we will develop the bylaws and operating guidelines, we'll develop that contract and bring it to your city staff for review, and then eventually, if we get the contract all ironed out and you all agree, then we would hire the director. And with a combined entity, we're gonna have cost savings because administration is gonna be less, we're gonna have more efficiency because tourism dollars can be directed at the entire community and all parts of our community, not just the Truman home, for example. And we can bring together a focus that will make our community far more a top of the mind when 
a tourist wants to come visit, when a business is looking at us, and we're gonna have a much better profile and performance when it comes to attracting businesses. That's the proposal. Now, what can I answer for you? I, Mayor, I hope I didn't go too long. I apologize. I know I'm the only thing on the agenda, but I did my best. No, no, that's fine. I think uh, this is a complex um, uh, topic, so I'm happy to take all the time that's necessary. Um, I will open it up to the council members for comments and questions. Would you like to begin? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mayor, Madam Mayor. Mr. Maurer, how are you? I'm great, thank you, sir. That was a good presentation. Thank you. And I appreciate the time everybody's put into this. Um, as you know, I have been skeptical is probably too kind a of word about the effectiveness of our EDC. Now, Jody is exactly what you said, if not better. And I know the Innovation Center um, is, is a, a great success and, and frankly runs itself. So let's start there. The Innovation Center, does that stay in the EDC or does that become its own entity? At the moment, the proposal is it would stay underneath the EDC as part of the EDC. Uh, but I agree with you just personally. Do I foresee someday that the Innovation Center could stand on its own and be a separate part of the Convention and Visitors Bureau? Absolutely. Before we did that, we would need to develop a board because Xander Winkler is phenomenal, but he can't do it alone. And we'd have to develop yeah. the support board so that the, e the Innovation Center had the guidance of those entrepreneurial spirited and minded folks with their experience and their guidance to really help that go. But eventually, could I see that? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Jody would stay with the EDC? It, not letting her go. And that would be a function of the EDC? Absolutely. In this process to do the retention and growth? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Now, uh, Let's talk a little bit about the effectiveness of the EDC. Tell me, tell me how the cash changes the function. The how does the how does the additional money from the city, the tourism dollars, being used for EDC activities? How does that increase the effectiveness of the EDC? What function does that change? The the number one thing that we run into in independence in trying to attract a new larger business is, well, I, I'm gonna give you two. I've talked about one, which is available, ready, available site. We don't have that yet. To develop the site, to get the developer to come to our town, to invest the money, to build a building, to start that domino effect of new business takes money because it is a hard sell. When you have nothing but acres of ground and, and you can look in Lenexa and everywhere you look, there's a ready-made building. It takes money and it takes, a, and it takes time. And it takes a very, very high-spirited, high-qualified person to do it. And it can't just be Jody, because Jody's already full. We need, oh, yeah. so, we need somebody that is dedicated solely to this. But look at Belton. It can be done. Belton took the Eagle Ridge Golf Course and they wiped it. And now they have what is just an absolute blowing up industrial site and it is no better location no better site no better ground than what we have here in the valley but it took a lot of time effort and money to find that developer to be the first one to put their shovel on the ground and build it the number two thing and this is where tourism dollars would really help economic development is we have an image and we need to promote our image better we need to do a much better job, starting with all of us, talking better about our own community and putting the message out there that independence is a vibrant, open, welcoming community. That it's a community of new, a community of fun, a community that you want to live and work in. That we don't have. And in fact, it would be better to be like Belton, having no image, 
than to have an image that's opposite of that. Tourism dollars will address that. Focused tourism dollars to promote our community as a place to visit, as a place to live, as a place to work will help that greatly. Not just to bring in a new big business. Um, one of the studies that I referenced in my proposal, I glossed over, is the Axios study. And they actually went through, and they, as, a, as a result of the pandemic, they, they identified, so if you're a stay-at-home worker and you can live anywhere, where would you choose to live? And once you got past the mountains and the beach, you got through down to, well, I want to live someplace that's fun. I want to live someplace that has interesting things going on. I want to live someplace with people my own age. I want to live someplace with really good schools. I want to live someplace that has lots of places where I can go to to shop and eat. We have many of those things in our community. We just need to talk better about it. We need to talk about it and tell that part of our story. And that will be then so that on TripAdvisor, you start seeing all those positive things. On Facebook, you start getting likes instead of negative tirades about our community. Those are the kind of things that the image of our community will be greatly benefited, and that will only help economic development. I can buy into that. There's, there's power and positivity. Um, but let's talk about a specific example. Okay. Because we have a bigger problem than just our own neg negative view of ourselves and, frankly, the rest of the Metro's view of us. Uh, we have people here that are highly resistant to change. Now, I'm sure we're not necessarily special. I'm sure a lot of places run into this. But as everybody in here is aware, we, we totally, 100% uh, as a community, as a council, as a city, as an EDC, as a chamber, it completely and utterly blew it with Van Trust. We let 180 households make a choice for the rest of the city that wouldn't have affected them negatively like they thought it would and would have provided a huge economic boost to us. So I expect us, like you said, with our, our image that's worse than neutral, um, how exactly are we going to address this problem? To this day, I don't know that we have a council that will stand up to 180 people. The ideally, <coughs> now let's, let's, I wish Council Member Steinmeier was here because I'm a little bit out over my skis, but I know that he spent a significant amount of time reworking our definition of an office park, a definition of a business park, definition of what would be qualified in certain uses, certain industrial uses, and so we have far better guidance now from this council on what you will approve. How most cities do it, and if this is approved, how I think we would come about it, is we would first go back and get the property rezoned. Let's rezone it now. Get it properly zoned so that when the industrial candidate comes, when the business candidate is looking, they don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, am I going to be able to get this rezoned? Am I going to be able to get it through the planning commission? Am I going to have to take an appeal to the city council and to require a supermajority vote? None of those things would happen. It's already approved. In your city plan, you've already said the valley needs to be business. So let's get it that way. Let's zone it that way. And then, with your guidance already in place on what would be acceptable, we will target that. We will bring you those type of businesses that would already be deemed acceptable. And I would, have I would hope that if we come to the council with a business that is approved for zoning and within the guidelines you've established for your new uh, business park developments, then we wouldn't have that resistance. There still might be you know, residents that would be concerned. I understand. But I don't think it would be nearly as much that it would cause the council to uh, balk at approval. I mean, I, I appreciate the strategy, and that's probably the right one. Uh, what it means to me is that if we do this, or something similar to it, or parts of it, that, that ab this is a gamble, and it's a risk now. It's not the risk that we've encumbered ourselves with in the city city manager's box full of tiffs or it's not the risk of bass pro so 
we're not going to be out tens of millions of dollars if we try this for a few years and it doesn't work. It may, may very well be worth a gamble. But make no mistake, that's what this would be. Can I quarrel with you a little bit about that? Absolutely. Let's get into it. I'm In good. all honesty, I don't see the risk at all. Let's start with, are you happy with the results you're getting? If you're not, let's not do keep doing the same thing. So there's no risk in making a change if what I've already got, I don't like. But should we do it at all? See, that's the question. You, well, you're already going to do the tourism part. You already have the hotel motel tax. You already are doing the tourism. The question is, in part, are you happy with what you got? Are you getting everything you want? If you're not, then change it. What's the risk of change if I don't like what I already got or I think I can do better? The, the absolute conclusion of everyone involved with this presentation was we can do better. There is better things that we can do, smarter, more efficient, more targeted, more effective. And what's the risk in giving it a try? You've still got, you, it's not costing you any more money. Your tourism dollars are still gonna be monitored. And in fact, I would submit you're gonna have more control because you're gonna have a convention and visitors bureau that by contract with measurable benchmarks, you're gonna be able to hold accountable. Right now, what's the accountability for your tourism division? What's the accountability for how those hotel motel tax dollars are being spent? It goes to Madden Media and they spend it on ads. Come to the Royals. What's our accountability for the EDC? The accountability for the EDC is we're trying and we wanna do it different because what we're doing is save Jody and the Innovation Center, what we're doing isn't good enough. We can do better. So the accountability is the 170,000, we're not asking you to just re-up that like you have for years because we wanna do something different. So what's the risk? We're not asking for more money. We're not asking for less work. We're not asking well, for less, less productivity. It'll be a lot more money. It won't be a lot more it'll money. It'll be in a different form, but it'll be a lot more money. It will be more available resources to everything. But the dollars will actually be less because right now you've got all of the hotel, motel, transit, and guest tax plus 170. This proposal is just the hotel, motel tax, not the 170. So it's less money. What's the carve out for our historic sites? The, the, it was a percentage. I believe the carve out was 30, 70, but there was, Morris was gonna do a little more looking and it might end up being 35, 65. If we did something like that, I'd want that to be flexible because if, if one year we have to put a roof on something or fix something, I mean, we need to have the ability to do that. Those are tax dollars and folks around here, you know how touchy they get. Absolutely. Um, I'm only looking at a one year renewable contract. So we absolutely could adjust every year. Okay. Now, Chamber of Commerce, most of the cities you looked at, uh, I don't know about all, you can tell me. If you would, I'd appreciate it. But at least a number of the cities you looked at, the Chamber of Commerce uh, was involved in these setups. Yes. Can you tell me how those, just explain how that setup works and-, and sure. In Olathe, for example, the Olathe has a CBB, but that by contract, they have a contract that also involves the chamber. So their chamber director is involved with three jobs, tourism, economic development, and leading the chamber. St. Joe is much the same way. Now, St. Joe has the one director that involved with chamber, plus economic development, plus tourism, and then, but they have a direct person that underneath that director that does nothing but economic development. And so, the, in, in our model, we looked at it, we talked with the chamber folks, um, just thought it would be better to do tourism and economic development alone, not involving the chamber. Um, are you free to share details on that? Sure, what can, I, what can I answer for you? I'm just curious if they didn't want to be a part of it or you didn't want them to be a part of it or <laughs> what the, <laughs> I don't that's, think it's that's the detail I'm talking about. Sure, I'm, sure. I'm curious, like, if this is how other people are doing it, does it make sense for us to split off from that or to continue to do it? Um, or to try to do the, what the other oh, folks thank are doing? You. I, the, 
it was not that we didn't want them or they didn't want us. I don't think that's it at all. The chamber is <coughs> a great organization. I was the president twice. Oh yeah. So, <coughs> but they have certain things that they want to focus their efforts on. They have lobbying. They have other other things that they have made their priorities. And being involved with tourism and economic development is not one of them. So it just wasn't anything that looked like there was any reason to talk about getting married. That's sort and that's of that's honestly about as far as it is. That's a bit disappointing to me because it's a perfect fit and I could see why other towns would combine them together. And at some point in time, maybe that'll happen. Um, yeah. Well, that's it for now. Okay. Thank well, thank you. Okay, hey, uh, Councilman Perkins. Anything from you? Digesting for sure. Um, good, good idea, good concept. If what we're doing is not working entirely, let's take a look and see what we can do to make it work better. Um, you mentioned a little bit about grant funding. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that a little bit more? What that was about? I know that. Um, as a separate organization, the EDC qualifies for a significant number of grants that we can make application for. The Innovation Center, for example, is undergoing one right now. The Independence Economic Development Council has, in its past, had a number of grants, like we had one called Digital Sandbox, wholly designed to try and promote um, that type of digital workforce and development here in Independence. If we were a division of the city, we would have not qualified. My understanding, now I'm out over my skis, but my understanding of the tourism is there are many of the same things. There are interest groups that want to promote the development of presidential historic sites and historic communities. There are um, interested uh, grants for uh, historic trails and pioneers and things like that that are available, but since we're part of the city, we don't qualify. I mean, I, I'll just put it out there. You're not going to get a private investor, private donor to give money to the government. That, that's just, they're not going to do it. And that's why if they were spun out, tourism would have, a ch have the opportunity to qualify for much more. I mean, even simply a PPP. I mean, they could have qualified for a PPP two rounds that would have been significant dollars to the tourism division to support their operations that they don't qualify for because they're part of the city. So leveraging the, the funds that the tourism would, would have if this was separate from the city would, mm -hmm. would be a big bonus. Absolutely. To do that. So in the nature of, of development and where tourism dollars are being spent, they're being spent downtown. So in conjunction, say, with the uh, Inglewood uh, Business Association and Inglewood mm -hmm. Arts, then the ISD, um, or the ISD, um, Independent Square Association, they can also work in conjunction with you much more fluidly with, with better expansion of, of how they spend their money and stuff too. It, it could be far better coordinated as a, <coughs> if tourism is a separate 501c6 than if it's part of the city, absolutely. A lot to digest, thank you, because we met a couple months ago. We did. I'd say give or take, and, and we were having some good give and take on this discussion. So I appreciate that. I appreciate the, the idea of expanding and looking at things differently. So we'll kind of keep, see where this conversation is going. Thank you. Okay, now it's my turn. Okay. <laughs> I have a lot of notes and so they're not gonna be in a real linear order. So just, um, I apologize for that. I, I think it's really important for us to take tonight to really help to communicate to our community, I kind of demystify the EDC and in some regards, our tourism division. Um, I, I think it's one of the things that the EDC has struggled with to uh, Councilman Hobart's point is finding that identity and how are we, how is the EDC different than the chamber and what what are things that the chamber does and what are things that the EDC does? Um, and particularly being co-located in the same building 
and really competing in some senses, in many cases, for the same investment. Uh, the chamber is looking for members, the EDC is looking for uh, investors, and what what is suited for who, and if somebody wants to make a choice, they said, you know, I can really only commit myself to one membership, where is that membership going to be? Um, so I wanted, you know, as I talk through my notes, I hope that maybe we can uh, clarify to people a little bit more about what the EDC does and how this may assist us in differentiating ourselves from the chamber. In any case, regardless of what happens, and I'll put the bottom line up front, I, I think this is certainly worthy for us to continue to explore. It may not end up looking precisely what you presented tonight, but in a community of our size with the capacities that we have, the EDC, the chamber, and the city have to be working in concert together or else it just doesn't work. And I would say the school districts are a critical part of that as well, although we don't have any ability to, uh, we work with the school districts, but we don't govern the school district in any way. So the ADC is a public-private partnership. That's the way that it was established in the 1980s to be essentially what operates as an external department of the city to to manage economic development. And there's very good reasons for that. When developers want to come to town, they expect a certain level of confidentiality as they're exploring various sites, as they're, as they're negotiating real estate deals, those types of things that need a level of confidentiality that the city uh, just simply cannot provide. Um, the city, as Mr. Maurer has said, we make an annual contribution of $170,000 cash to, as, um, as a partner with the EDC. That's not, we're not a member like we are, like of the chamber. This is a partnership. Um, but I do wanna add that the city's contribution to the EDC goes far beyond the financial contribution. We, as, our, as a partnership, we provide the staff support when a rezoning is required, when an incentive is being sought. Our staff, our, uh, utilities need to be extended, a road needs to be built. All that's handled here in the city through our departments um, in coordination with the EDC and the investor who's seeking to develop in our city. Um, we provide the advocacy. Um, we employ two lobbying firms in Jefferson City. One is entirely dedicated to utilities, and one of the reasons for that is to make our continue to keep our utility rate competitive so that we can attract business. We um, this year, I our four primary objectives in Jefferson City that our lobbyists advocate on behalf spoke directly to economic development. Getting Wayfair passed, getting the gas tax passed, getting the cable franchise fee negotiated, and preventing um, harmful changes to economic development incentive policies. Um, the city, our, our taxpayers, um, bear the entire cost of uh, utilizing those, uh, those lobbyists in Jefferson City. And I would say we advocate not only on behalf of the city, but on behalf of the EDC and the chamber um, at our expense, at the expense of obviously our community. The city also um, carries the KCADC membership. That's the Kansas City Area Development Council which is the uh, business attraction uh, agency for the region. And uh, they deal with 
industrial and large commercial type businesses. They don't meddle in, in entrepreneurial type um, things, but um, we pay an annual membership to the KCADC and the city bears that expense. So just all in our contribution financially and with support is far exceeds $170,000. Um, the next, um, which I covered that already. Um, why promote economic development? I, you know, that uh, part portion of your presentation, and I will ask, or I will answer somewhat Councilman Hobart's question is, what's the accountability to the EDC? Our EDC and every EDC is measured on how many new jobs you brought in, how many jobs you retained, and the dollars of capital investment. Um, when our community does well in those three areas, the EDC may not be directly involved with things like that, but that's what they're measured on. It doesn't matter that they didn't bring that company to town. If Centerpoint does an expansion and spends $100 million adding on to their hospital, that counts on the EDC scorecard. I mean, that's, that's how they, the EDC is, is judged. Um, I mean, that's a basic formula of economic development is how many jobs did you bring in, how many jobs did you keep, and how much capital investment did you attract to the community. Whether we had a direct hand in it or not, that's, um, that's the accountability piece of it. Um, I, I mean, we know we need industrial development. There's absolutely no debate about that. It's in every single citizen survey we've ever done. It's in our comprehensive development plan. Um, we built the little, we opened up the Little Blue Valley um, for that intention. We're working really hard on some infrastructure, on the federal infrastructure bill to be able to bring more investment to infrastructure to allow for that type of development in uh, the valley and other parts of the city. And manufacturing and distribution looks a whole lot different today than it did when we had Alex Chalmers and Standard Oil and Armco Steel. Um, so the business park development, light manufacturing that we're interested in attracting, um, you know, we, we need it and we have opportunities to get it. I was at, I'm a member of also of the Kansas City Chamber Board. I was at their board meeting today. It was reported to us that the KC Chamber Public Policy Committee, which of course here covers two states, has one objective for this year for Kansas and Missouri, and it's workforce development. Our businesses are starving for people to come to work for them all over the region. The governor's made this a, his priority since the day he stepped into the office about workforce development. So we, you know, definitely will be assisting in that, but we've always been hung our hat on our workforce and independence that we have available workforce that is reliable, shows up, you know, does it, puts in a full day's work, but we gotta have places for people to go to work. And we need to attract people from other communities to come and work here. Um, we have, at my most recent um, data, which is a little bit outdated, um, only about 10% of people who live in independence work in independence. Everybody's going someplace else from nine to five. They're going to lunch someplace else. They're getting their car service someplace else. <laughs> They're, you know, picking up the groceries someplace else because they, their job is someplace else. They love coming he home here, um, but the types of employment that our residents are, um, doing to make a living, to put their kids in our schools and put live in the houses in our community are getting their paycheck someplace else. So that's just a reality and it's something that I think we definitely need to fix. Um, 
I'm curious, um, and maybe this is a question for the same manager, on the presentation to the Tourism Commission, it said, we're traditionally at a competitive disadvantage due to funding and our current structure. So can you maybe elaborate on that? Yeah, um, let's start with the structure first. Um, other entities such as the one that Steve described or our next door neighbor, Kansas City, Missouri, who has the um, Visit KC, uh, let's hold them up as the example here. So they have a transient guest tax, uh, just similar as we do. However, Visit KC is a separate not-for-profit entity outside of the city of Kansas City, Missouri structure. What that means is they are not bound by and subject to similar uh, procurement policies, um, rules of procedure, personnel policies, et cetera. Um, this is a hospitality business, a hospitality industry. Right. That means to attract that, there are certain hospitality activities that have to take place. You know, people expect to be entertained if you want their entertainment business. So if we're trying to get a tour group or a conference or some activity like that, then we need to make a favorable impression upon that. And there's certain business activities that we're, you know, are expected to do that um, in order to help have a you know, leg up or um, you know, be able to make that kind of impression. So that is what's meant by the structural change that's mm -hmm. needed. From the financial standpoint, again, going back to Visit KC, certain um, tourism agencies across the state of Missouri have been designated by the state as a direct marketing organization. And I'm gonna get into that yeah. in just and, a moment. And that's but what that was so about. So like just, um, okay, I mean, this is how, this is what I see be in, you know, having a lot of exposure to things around the region, around the state, and even, you know, places that we've traveled as a city around the country to see how other cities operate is, um, we have the money. We do a good, uh, you know, we do a pretty darn good job of getting heads and beds to generate this approximately $2 million um, in transient guest tax that we collect. And the city's the only, thing, only, only one in the room who can collect taxes. So that's not going to change. We, uh, no matter what this ends up looking like, if we make any change at all, it's still, the city's going to collect the money and then somehow um, put it where it needs to be. Um, and they just don't, we just don't have a great structure to be able to spend that money effectively. Um, you know, all of our peers are traveling um, so that they can attend um, very important conferences and conventions where they can make those connections to introduce people to our city. They are, we have the NFL draft coming up. We are competing for the World Cup in 2026. Um, we have the NHL game at the Cable Dahmer Arena on October 2nd. I mean, these are big events that people, um, that require a high level of entertainment, hospitality, marketing, that we just don't simply have a really great um, vehicle to be able to, do, to participate fully in those types of things. And therefore, we often find ourselves left out of these regional events, such as, you know, years ago, the All-Star Game, um, that we, ju we just didn't have much of a presence when those types of things happen because of the restrictions uh, partially. Okay, the DMO, this is a phrase that's been destination marketing organization that's been mentioned a couple times this evening and I wanna make sure people understand what that is. Um, currently, Visit KC is the destination marketing organization for Jackson County. Um, this is a way for the, it is the way, I should say, for the um, state tourism department to distribute money into communities for them to promote tourism activities. Um, when Governor Parsons first came to the Truman Library, 
when before it even you know got under construction to visit it and see what it looked like before we did a thirty seven million dollar renovation he asked me how much money do you get from the state of missouri for tourism the answer is zero we get zero it goes to visit kc and then visit kc uses it to promote independence blue springs lisa all the cities kansas city all the cities in Jackson County plus Visit KC gets an allocation, I think it's about 40% of the Kansas City, Missouri transient bed tax. Um, they're contracted out, which is sort of the structure that we're discussing tonight. Um, we used to be a certified DMO, and then the legislature made the decision that there was only going to be one per county. So when they, a decision was made about who it was going to be, you know, logically it made sense that that was going to be Visit KC. It wasn't going to be the Independence Tourism uh, Department. And that's not a, at all, you know, a indictment of quality. It's just, you know, it obviously Kansas City outpunches us, you know, on that level due to their size and the number of assets that they have. But Visit KC is regional and is the, um, certified DMO that is responsible. We don't pay anything to, towards that. I mean, we're not, but Visit KC gets Kansas City tax dollar money, they get state of Missouri tax dollar uh, money, plus they um, have private memberships who, uh, Truman Library being one of them, who um, pays dues to be able to um, be included in all their marketing activities, digital marketing, print marketing, all of those type, types of things. So I wanted to make sure that we understood that everybody who's listening understands what a destination marketing organization is. Um, you, uh, you know, I talked about visibility and visitor perception. This is something that the chamber, the all the business associations, the EDC, this council, prior councils, everybody talks about this. How do we, are we've done branding studies, branding campaigns, one for the tourism department, one for the city as a whole, all geared towards telling an authentic story about who independence is and fixing the things that we're not very proud of uh, that don't reflect well on our community. Um, you know, again, I, I point to the World Cup that, you know, Kansas City, the Kansas City region is competing to be a part of that in 2026. Um, that's 3.5 billion viewers, an audience of 3.5 billion people worldwide watching these matches in these cities in, you know, 10 cities um, in North America. So, um, but they gotta, you know, come for site visits. Somehow they're gonna get from the Kansas City Airport out to Arrowhead Stadium. And what's that gonna look like? So we need to, you know, be thinking about that is how do we um, improve that that route, the, those entry points. And some of that just simply boils down to the investment of visitors, of, of private businesses uh, to help to increase these resources so we can do those types of things. Um, excuse me. Um, Questions uh, on the ballot language. This is something that I've been very interested in, I think since I've lived in independence, is two questions. One, what is the definition of tourism? Because this clearly states that, this is, that the tax is to be used for the promotion, operation, and development of tourism. Um, I recall when 
the Falls of Crokernet Creek was being developed, and Steve Maurer will remember this too. Bass Pro was um, often referred to as this is a tourism attraction. People will come from miles and miles around to come to Bass Pro, like they do at Cabela's at the Legends, like they do for Nebraska Furniture Mart. Um, so let me maybe have you talk about that in particular as retail and business, does that qualify as a tourism attraction? Absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> the state of Kansas tracks their visitor sites and Cabela's and Nebraska Furniture Mart draw more visitors to Wyandotte County than the racetrack more than the Hollywood Casino. It is, Cabela's Nebraska Furniture Mart is like the number three site in the entire state of Kansas. So absolutely a business can bring visitors to the community. Um, in Louisville, Kentucky, they have a giant baseball bat that's very <laughs> prominent in their area and that's to feature the Louisville Slugger. Look in our own state, the Sa in St. Louis. They built the entire ballpark village, supposedly for the Cardinals. But a lot of people go to that site, not just to go to the game. Those retail businesses, that atmosphere draws tourists, draws people. The, def the best definition, working definition of tourism that I've ever her heard that encompasses everything is that which attracts people to your community. And if you're gonna if you're gonna do something to get people to come to your town, that is tourism, and that's what you're trying to do in a very positive way. And how you want to spend those tax dollars, particularly when you have the treasures that we do, like Bingham Wagner, like Vale Mansion, like the 1859 Jail, like the Truman Home, the Truman Library, that other communities don't have. But that's just, it's just not, that's not it. That's not everything that we have. So I think, and Councilman Perkins, you know, kind of noted that tourism dollars are being spent in our historic district. And, I, and that is certainly true. I mean, that's where these treasures are. But I would venture to guess that that's probably not where most of our marketing dollars are going. I think it's probably, um, or the, the tour, how the tourism funds are being currently expended. We're trying to attract these um, youth athletic events. I mean, obviously the last two years have been very challenging to do that um, because of the pandemic. Um, the, I think people would be surprised to know that the genealogy library attracts more visitors than the Truman Library does people coming to do research on their family history. Um, and when, you know, dad enjoying himself digging through the stacks, <laughs> mom and the kids are off doing something else um, and they're here for a few days. Um, with the Truman Library currently closed, obviously that no, definitely affects um, just visitors coming through the door to, toward the exhibits but it affects scholars who come here sometimes for weeks at a time to do research in the research um, facilities at the Truman Library. So there's just a lot more to it below the surface than what we normally think of as museums and, and places to go and take a tour of a, of a building. I mean, there's uh, much more to that. I just think that we need, does, Kansas City and some of the other cities that utilize their tourism dollars in this way, is their ballot language the same as this? Or, I, I, I mean, I just, th we need to be very clear before we have any further discussion if this is, um, you know, a proper use of the money that we collect through the transient best fed tax. Yeah, Mayor, I think that's something that we'd want to sit down with legal counsel and, you know, do a side-by-side -side comparison of those and, and point well taken. Okay. Um, okay, we already talked about how the division of the funding would go between ma making sure that we're not on defunding our 
historic sites, and I think that that's um, the right way to approach it and whatever those numbers, you know, if this is how we end, a direction that we end up going is dividing that by percentage rather than by budget dollar amount per se, because really what that means is success for everybody means more income for everybody. If we get, if we're successful in having more overnight visitors to the city than the historic sites benefit and the Convention and Visitors Bureau model benefits. I remember years ago when I was first on the council and we, I believe it was hosted by, the, I'm sure it was hosted by the EDC. You know, one of the, one, those great events that they have where they bring in developers and just kind of have a panel discussion and I'm not sure who the developer was who said this, but it, you know, it, it was as usual, a very um, elite and respected panel. And they said, forget about trying to get people to move here, get them to visit first. Get them over here to see what you're about, um, spend a night and start, you know, giving them that experience in your community. And in all the, things that I've been involved with, um, with economic development, tourism, you know, my volunteer activities with places like the Truman Library. Not once has anybody come to Independence and said, man, that place is terrible. They always say, wow, this place is pretty cool. <laughs> always. I mean, we do a great job of selling this community when we get people in the front door. Um, sometimes they're, you know, pleasantly surprised, but most of the time they come in with a positive attitude. All of the, all of the studies that we've done are branding studies, both of them. The opinion of people outside our community is much higher than the people inside of our community. We are, I mean that, and, and there's reasons for that. When you live in a community, you, when you visit a community, you see all the best things. You don't, you know, um, experience, you know, the frustrations that you do sometimes when you're a business owner or a resident that's, you know, when are they going to fix that pothole type <laughs> things that, you know, people experience. But those studies would be very worthwhile looking at, um, again, to remind ourselves, you know, the opinions of people inside of our city versus the people outside of our city. Um, so, um, Councilman Hobart brought up uh, Van Trust and, you know, obviously not, uh, you know, didn't turn out yet the way that we wanted it to. We did certainly, as a community, did not necessarily put our best foot forward um, a word of caution. There are projects coming. We have developers right now, uh, some who are very well known to us, who are right here in our community, some who are expressing an interest in coming over and learning more. Um, let's not make the same mistake again. Um, these projects need advocacy. We are far beyond the days in this city where we're just willing to take whatever we get. We are, have established strong criteria for the quality of development that we want. We have put in a lot of work into policy uh, making about our incentive programs, about how the development has to fit, about a brand new comprehensive development plan, a downtown, downtown redevelopment plan. I mean, the list goes on and on of things that we um, have done to prepare for these things and build the type of community that this, uh, the citizens here envision. Um, so we're, we're going to get more opportunities and some of them are, have been through most of the process. 
um, specifically, you know, Cargo Largo, which has been trying to locate on Nolan Road for, I think, you know, 25 years and has gone through our incentives committee. It's been recommended to the council for approval. We have not yet had it on our agenda. Uh, but if we need to have some success and these are the types of things that the council needs um, to feel supported by the community if this is the type of thing that the community wants. Um, I'm in conversations with you know, at least three other developers who are interested in doing projects in our city and um, we can't we can't fail another time. That doesn't mean we have to accept what they're bringing. We're gonna look at them and go through the process and all of that, but um, you know, we, we've got another opportunity. Um, the Innovation Center, and this is the last thing I'm gonna talk about on this topic. Um, Dan, you know, Hobart said, it, it runs itself. I know that's not, he didn't mean that, like it doesn't, somebody doesn't run it. <laughs> I, mean, it means, I don't mean, but it's a very unique asset. Xander and Alex do a phenomenal job uh, operating it, promoting it, keeping the entrepreneurial spirit alive in independence. More, I mean, we heard a report just a few weeks ago from Xander about that. That's a really important part of our community, but that's not what the KCADC does. I mean, there are two, it takes a, a lot of different approaches to build it, your community and fill in the gaps. Uh, we're working a lot on that through our housing study and trying to get our arms around exactly what this community is going to look like. Um, so I think that probably wraps up all of my comments and questions. I absolutely feel that this is um, something that we should continue to pursue and you know see how it works out. It may not, as I say, look exactly like this right out of the gate. It may not look like this at all, but we, only have, our, our, I just don't believe that our, the resources that we have are being deployed in the most effective way. So I'm excited to continue to have the conversation. Anything else? Yeah. I came up with a few more, Madam okay. Mayor. A little, little recross for uh, Mr. Maurer. Um, <laughs> uh, did you talk to the the, like Olathe or these other cities about what they felt their return has been or their growth has been in their tourism or their EDC since they've gone to this model? Yes. They were very pleased the city has re-upped the contract at least four years in a row. And eat the, to the point that, and I'm gonna probably give away too much, the Olathe doesn't even transfer all of the hotel motel tax anymore because their economic development and tourism didn't need it all. And so they actually have more hotel motel tax now than what they need for their operations. Well, that's good to know, but is it one of those cases where they could just pour more gas on the fire or is it they've sort of reached their their peak for their recent, for their, you know, city? I, I don't know what led to that decision. I just know from both the city side and from the operational side, um, the folks that do their economic development tourism within the, uh, for the city, they were <coughs> like, we have enough. We, what we can do, what we think we can effectively deploy, how we want to allocate our daughter, dollars, we're good. And so this excess that came in from the growth in their hotel motel tax stayed with the city for other things. Very good. Um, Okay, I have a couple requests for you. Sure. One, can you send me the studies that you referenced that you looked at so I can read those? Absolutely. Um, two, and I haven't seen it lately. Uh, uh, the mayor brought up that 
there are measurables for our EDC. Do we do we have reports that are uh, the jobs and the capital investment? Can we get those going back three or five years, maybe? I can get you those. Because I know COVID's going to be bad and the director issue, but maybe we can see some in the regular years. Yep. I can get you those. Wonderful. A um, couple other things I wanted to. Uh, oh, one more thing. I, I would, and it's going to sound like I'm uh, questioning you, or, uh, but I am. <laughs> I, it's going to sound like what it is. Glad I spit that out. So I would really like to explore this idea of the chamber being involved. Uh, I say that as a person that's not spent the last two months researching this issue. I've had no conversations with anybody outside of right now or today about sort of this concept. So I'm new to it. My question may be naive or it may be uh, a waste of time. Um, uh, but unless until I know otherwise, I would, I, would, I would really like to see if the chamber could be a part of the conversation. If other cities are utilizing their chambers as a part of this process, um, you know, I'm not saying it's a good fit or not, but if we are going to take in what, in my mind, is a risk, not so much in yours, but I'd, I'd like to have the most solid foundation we can get and the, the right, all the right people involved that we have access to. So, I'm happy to make that connection for you. Yes, okay. Sir. Okay. I appreciate that. Um, I wanted to, then the last thing was I wanted two more clarifications. So just so, and this is for people at home. It's my understanding that the, the funding the city currently gives the EDC, the 170,000, comes from utility funds, not the general fund. Is that right? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry if I misspoke. Utility funds. I my think apologies. that's right. I made a note of it. So uh, just so people at home know. And the second thing is, just to clarify, there, there is no new tax with this. Correct. Yeah. The tax that's referenced in your presentation is the existing tourism sales tax. Yep. Transient guest tax, yep. Transient guest tax, my apologies, okay. Um, also known as the hotel motel tax. I got gotcha. you. It's not a tax on food, it's not a tax on um, gift shops, it's the heads on beds tax. Yeah. Transient guest tax. Very good. And it's already in place. I appreciate that. Uh, I have a question for the city manager, if I might, Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. City Manager, um, what, what, I'm not asking for your, your uh, policy level view on this, but um, if this structure or something similar to it went into place, um, does that affect you in a negative or positive way that you see right off the bat, or does that cause some other problems in the city that we might not be thinking of? You know, again, the complexity of this, I think we're doing the right thing to have a thorough conversation and one we'll want to, to continue um, but the first blush at this, um, and this is obviously not the first time I've heard the presentation, you know, we've been working behind the scenes to kick this around for several months now. Uh, I, I think there's a lot that makes sense about this. Um, our, in my opinion, our key asset in the city, the thing that differentiates us from other communities is our historic sites and our history and our ability to tell that story the preservation that has been done in this community and, and to be able to come and see and touch and feel and experience that history is one of a kind and, and unique for the region, if not nationwide. Um, so I, I also would say, you know, in, in a community, we've done a lot of work to improve um, workforce development and economic development. We've surpassed ahead of our goal, our raising our median household income. Uh, above 50,000, but that said, um, you know, we still have, you know, limited resources across the board. So where we have an opportunity to combine forces and maximize those resources, instead of going to a business owner and hitting them up for a EDC membership and a chamber membership and, and, and if it makes sense to consolidate those, um, to maximize the financial resources in to the organization and then their ability to be the tip of the spear to plow through that. Uh, I think that makes a lot of sense for us as well. Um, and then as the mayor said, you know, just promoting and getting people 
to come back to the community, to come back and visit these sites, and to make the sites attractive and compelling enough for them to want to come. Um, that, that you know that these sites have a modern day um, flair on them, if you will, that tells the story, but tells it in a way that today's consumer finds engaging and entertaining. Uh, you can go out to Manhattan, Kansas, to the um, Flint Hills Discovery Center. It's an entire museum about dirt, <laughs> but it's absolutely fascinating because of the you know way in which that story is told. And you've never been so excited about dirt. It's it's something else. So. If we can do those kind of things to get people in here, I think if you, you know, what do they say, you know, put those five fingers together and the fist is more powerful than any one of the fingers, I, I think we could could see some real benefits from this. If it's considered in a thoughtful way and those conversations continue to where we don't inadvertently um, trip over something. And one last question for you. Uh, and do you fe feel comfortable that, that with this sort of proposal that uh, you and your staff would be able to still preserve and uh, care for our historic sites. That's really very important to me and I know to a lot of people in the community. Yeah, and, and again, I'll reiterate a couple of things that were said in there just so it doesn't get lost in the conversation tonight. The, the funding mechanism that's being proposed, the allocation, would mimic what is happening today, you know, the, the percent allocation that's being set aside for marketing versus the amount that's being set aside for historic site preservation and maintenance, et cetera, would, would follow and mimic that. But that said, as you heard Mr. Maurer say, he's looking at a year-to-year -year contract that could be adjusted based on the need so that if there it were known that there were a year where a big investment were going to be necessary in one of those sites, that contract could be scalable or adjustable to meet the need um, along the way. And, and I know this wasn't your direct question, but let me add this on as well. Um, yes, this, as the mayor said, um, we are the only one that can levy the tax. We are the only one that can collect the tax. That is a um, responsibility that's been given to us by the voters and, and a, a, a privilege as well too. Um, but we do have models in this city, as Mr. Maurer pointed out, with like the event center um, where in order to most effectively manage and promote that facility to get maximum impact, that is, you know, operated outside of the city sphere to where there is a board that has city representation on it, but operates apart from and separate from the city so that it can function and compete with its peers, you know, like the Midland, Starlight, to some degree even the T-Mobile Center, et cetera. So we, we have those abilities and have proven concept to have oversight of public tax dollars while also still having those managed by contract outside and apart from the city. Thank you, Mr. City Manager, and thank you, Mr. Maurer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Appreciate thank you for being here. Uh, next on our agenda, uh, Madam City Clerk has the Boards and Commission to report. Okay, uh, any objections? And we will add that to the next agenda. Okay, next is the Boards Commission. A recommendation has been made by Council Member Sussman to appoint Hannah Evans. If there's no objection, we'll add her voice into the next agenda. Is there any objection? Please add that to the next agenda. Okay, is there any objection? Hearing none, you can add that to the next agenda. Okay. Lastly, we have the Independent Historic Advisory Board. A recommendation has been made to appoint Austin Connolly or Connolly. If there's no objection, we'll add her voice into the next agenda. Any objection? Please add that to the next agenda. Um, under other discussion topics, this isn't really a this is something that's already been discussed, so I'm just going to announce the results. Um, as I, the gas tax in the state of Missouri goes into effect on October the 1st. That will be a 2.5 cent increase um, to your motor vehicle fuel 
at the pump. I want to advise people there was, this is a tax that is optional. If you choose not to pay this tax, you must retain your receipts. And those receipts can be submitted at a later date with your tax return and you can be reimbursed for the increment of the increase. Um, the director of the Department of Revenue put out a memo to that effect this week, which I think is probably pretty widely available. Um, it does require, you know, your obviously name, your, the date of the purchase, um, if you want to throw all those in the shoebox and uh, turn them in with your tax return, then you have the opportunity to do that. This was something that the city advocated on in support of the gas tax, understanding that those who choose to can opt out of, um, that you have to pay it, but you will be reimbursed the full amount. Uh, but this, for those who choose not to seek reimbursement, uh, this will be a considerable increase to our ability to maintain and con our streets and to construct new infrastructure. So I just wanted to, again, make people aware that this will be something that you'll see beginning on October the 1st. Anything else from the council this evening? Anything else, Mr. City Manager? Nothing tonight, thank you. We're adjourned.